Good afternoon, everybody. Um, hopefully we'll have. Um, I can't see who's here, but. Um, welcome, we're starting at. Directly at 230. Um, welcome to the, the face race summit 22, the session two. And uh, this is panel five. Um, my name's Nicholas Dunn and I am the year two leader for the BA textiles course at uh, Chelsea College of Art. And on the 28th of September this year, at the beginning of um, the academic year, um, we recorded a panel discussion that I'm going to share with you today. Um, and the panel was um, made up of uh, three final year students, um, myself as the, the year leader for the second year students at Chelsea, um, Elaine Ego, um, the year leader for the third years, and um, Sigmoni Kluge, uh, uh, another um, academic um, specialising in, in knit at Chelsea, and two um, experts from industry. Yeah. And um, the, we had a conversation about the expectations of diversity within education and industry. And I'm going to share with share that with you now. Um, hopefully we'll have five minutes um, or, or, or more at the end for a, a Q&A. So I'm going to share my screen now. Just bear with me and play it for you. Okay, so yeah, first of all, welcome again. I'm really glad that you guys have um, uh, accepted and sort of wanted to sort of speak about this interesting topic um, that we're going to speak about. And the topic is um, expectations of diversity. You know, what were what were your expectations of diversity going into sort of education? And then also, what are your aspirations of diversity when you go into the industry? Um, we've, we've got a, a really great um, a lot of panelists here and um, students on my, um, on my right. And um, Hi, Nick, could you please unmute your mic and then we, I think we can get the sound back. Um, in the innovation and textiles and strategy. Uh, hello, my name is Xiao and uh, I am a footwear designer. I studied, um, I came to the UK uh, in 2010 from China and I studied uh, two years at Kurt Wainers in London College of Fashion on footwear design. 
And then I moved on to work in Germany, then came back to the UK again, studied in the Royal College of Art um, between 2013 to 2015. And since then, I've been working in footwear design industry as a designer consultant for high fashion brands and global foot, like sports brands. Introduce myself, so my name is Sigmarini Kaluji, as you might know me. Um, so I lecture in textile design and critical practice here at Chelsea. Um, I also have a background in textiles and knitwear. Um, I did my BA degree in textile design at Central St. Martins, um, then left at my own business for a little while, and then came back to lecture. So, yeah, that's me. Um, hi, I'm Julia. I'm in textiles final year at Chelsea. So I firstly came here in 2013, so this is my ninth year I've been living in the UK. Hi, I'm Omar. I'm in my third year of textiles at Chelsea. Um, my specialty interests in knitwear, and prior to this, I was studying and living in Dubai with my family before moving to London to study design. Hi, I'm Pam. I moved to the UK since 2016. And I did my A-levels here, and now I'm doing textile design in my final year at Chelsea. Great. Wonderful. So let's start this conversation. As Nick has already introduced, one of the first things we want to explore is, um, and this is directed to, to you three here, what were your expectations of racial diversity when you embarked on your education in design? Shall I go first? Yeah. Well, I was born here, so outside of London, so it's predominantly, I was surrounded by people predominantly white, so I didn't really have but it was still heavily white too. Um, so I had absolutely no expectation. Um, I think what was sad, thinking about it, it's sad that I didn't have an expectation, that I just expected it to be white, predominantly white. I had a similar um, expectations that have no expectations. <laughs> uh, so I grew up in China, so that is not diverse at all, which is all Chinese. Uh, so when I came here, I just expected to be the outsider and expected to be this, the non-white person in in the class, in, in, in the industry. So I, I didn't have any expectations going into LCF uh, or RCA. I did feel more comfortable in LCA, in RCA, because there's more uh, diverse students. That was kind of not very long time ago, mm. but back in 2010, when I was in LCF, it was, I was the uh, only two non-white students in the class and everyone was English. Um, so I just accepted it thinking, you know, that was just um, mm. part of it. Yeah. But you, you did say something interesting in the sense that that experience at LCF wasn't all around a positive experience, right? Yeah, so I had I had a tutor at the time that I felt I, I am international rap, so I was trying to raise voices for international students, which is only a few of us. <laughs> so uh, I felt being kind of mistreated by my tutor at the time and um, I guess it's a long time ago, isn't it? It's 10 years ago, and um, it's a different environment then. But I've been kind of mistreated. I felt being unfairly treated as the international students. They assumed that we don't speak English. They assumed, that, you know, like they just didn't give us enough feedback. And uh, I felt um, like that, that wasn't like, I didn't feel comfortable studying there. So I, I left the LCF. Sure, sure. Yeah. Must have been a difficult decision to make to, you know, move and change from the, the degree that you'd started. How did you come to make that decision and how did you make it work for you? Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to have, to 
get an internship in Germany. So when I was making the decision, I was kind of um, half in the industry. So I made a decision to purely the fact that I feel like I'm not gaining anything from this degree due to I feel like the tutor wasn't like neglecting our my my wish to study and also I'm not gaining much from my other English peers because they don't feel my experience and they can't sure. share any kind of sure. so, so the the fact that there wasn't um there wasn't many people that um, could relate to yeah. what he was going through yeah. also made it quite a frustrating yeah. sort of um, ex yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah yeah that's that's understandable. Yeah. Okay. I hear from both of you and talking about the idea of expectations. I think mine was very different. I think because I was born and raised in London, um, my parents have a Ghanaian heritage. So I went to school, like secondary school in East London. So I had the expectation that it would be very diverse when I went to do my foundation. Um, and when I went into higher education and the arts, it wasn't, I think I was one of maybe, I don't know, 10 black students on my foundation. And on my degree, maybe one of three black female girls. So it was a bit of a shock when I first started. Um, but I think also, you know, having that accommodation in London and still seeing my friends and things, I kind of met, I had friends that were also in other arts universities. So I was able to kind of nurture a bit of community as well. Um, I did end up on my second year, taking a year out on my degree and going to work for a, Ghana, a, a designer in Ghana. And because my, my love of textiles definitely came from my heritage of me being Ghanaian and being British born. And I just was like, I need to take a year out just to kind of find myself. And when I ended up taking the year out working in Ghana, obviously with the Ghanaians or even though I'm British born, um, it really meant that I kind of found my sense of self. So when I came back to do my degree, um, I was able to bring that influence into my work, regardless of the space. And I was able to find friends that were still doing on creative courses and, and find a sense of community. So I think even though it wasn't what I had expected, I was able to navigate the experience in my own kind of way. And I kind of try to bring that back to how I lecture with students now. Yeah, that's yeah. really interesting to see yeah, how that kind of emboldened you as well, having had that experience yeah. is, is really, um, really interesting. I'm just going to pass the question over to the students now, really. You know, you're in education at the moment. Um, when you started, did you have any expectations of, of racial diversity at the institutions that you were joining? So um, when I first started my A-levels, when I, because that college was like um, advertised for an international student and both British student. So when I first came, I expect them to be more diversity in the classroom, but it, it wasn't it wasn't like that in the class. I was the only Asian girl and I, I didn't get treated the same way as everyone. And I feel like I'm I'm different. And yeah, but Pam, was was that the first time that you'd been you, you had that feeling was, um in the sense of experience that? Yeah, because um in in Thailand we I grew up in like international school and then at high school. So I kind of like think okay if it is if it's say international school it will be diverse and yeah but it, it wasn't until i moved here to doing my ba degree it was completely different i feel like i see more diversities and i feel like i'm part of community now yeah uh, so as I'd mentioned, I'd grown up in Dubai before moving to London, and Dubai is quite an international community. A lot of people coming in and out for work and to live there, and so my schooling was quite international. It's around a lot of different cultures and people. And moving to London, the big city, I just figured it would be the same situation of diversity. But I think for me, the meaning of diversity changed a lot when I moved to London because there are a lot of different cultures and people in Dubai, but. It is very much routine. Everyone has like similar financial backing, similar jobs, similar routine. Like in my school, even though there are also different cultures, we all studied the same things and was given we'd all go out to uni. We all had the same sort of beliefs and mindset. It was more of a mental thing. More of, everyone had the same sort of mindset or way of thinking. So when I moved to London, there was more physical diversity in the sense of different cultures, nationalities, but we had, I met people that had very different religious beliefs, different gender identity, sexual orientations, and just different ways of going about life, especially in our school's great environment to meet people that might have a more alternative approach to life that I grew up with. And 
So for me, I expect there to be diversity, but I think the way what diversity meant to me changed a lot when I moved here. There was a lot of different ways to approach and to see how people how people were in London. It's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I grew up in China as well, and then back in China, I went to both public schools and international schools, and then none of that was diverse. It was all like the majority was just Chinese people, mm -hmm. and maybe one or two from Korea, and then that's it. And then when I moved to UK in 2013, so I was expecting that I would be probably the only Asian girl in the school. And then I was right. <laughs> yeah. And then um, as the years um, grow, and then there were more Chinese people coming in, I like see more people from different backgrounds as well. And then I also moved to Oxford to do my A level. And then that was not diverse in the tutors or in the students. So I think I didn't really have it that much expectations when I go into universities. So it was more like a surprise for me. So I see there's like an increase in the diversity in the student um, in at university right now. And I feel it's more comfortable because I can somehow relate to different people. And then I learning the cultures from different people as well. And then that was the main thing I was looking for when I firstly came to UK. But after like seven or eight years, I finally achieved it. That's <laughs> yeah. That's great. Um, did anyone else have, you know, can describe the positive impact of finding a space which is diverse? It almost sounds like, Omar, you were sort of searching to experience being in a, a space which had more diversity. Um, you know, you talked about, um, Sigmoni, the kind of different positionality as well that you've come from. And, and Chi, you talked about kind of being in Scotland and, and those experiences of diversity. When you found racial diversity, what was the impact on you? Yeah, so I was going to say, I think it did definitely open up, it opened myself up to new ways of thinking and my approach to life. Like, as, as as unfortunate as it sounds, I've never really met a queer person, been part of a queer community before moving to London. And it's definitely a lot more expansive than I thought it initially was. And well, getting to understand myself better in that regard was also really, was really amazing. And um, yeah, like I said, just kind of ways of life, seeing that when I met other Arabs, like seeing other Arabs in London that had a sense of community or had different ways of thinking and doing things was also really interesting. Um, so it's nice to know that, and also within our university, it's amazing because even though there's a lot of differences, we're all kind of in the same boat. It's nice to know that everyone's in the same space of wanting to be creative, wanting to maybe break the norms, maybe want to just have different ways of expressing themselves. And so that brings like kind of the biggest breakthrough I had with diversity and knowing that not everything's very much the same, not everyone has the exact same way of thinking. I, I think I'd, I'd like to sort of, like, I think it's important that um, we um, speak about our experiences as well. And, you know, I'm, I'm from London, uh, uh, you know, grew up in, in in South London, and my ex my experience, you know, is is a diversity, you know, and um, my experience of growing growing up was 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 sort of very very diverse. And then when I went into um, education, especially sort of creative further education, at the beginning. Um, you know, doing things like diplomas and uh, um, high national diplomas in 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 footwear design, it was it was very diverse. But the further the further um, I went onto my degree, there was I think it was me and one other um, one other West Indian boy, and then that was and that was it. And then going on to the um, to the Royal College it was actually just me and uh, me and um, Chi and uh, there was a, you know there's maybe four or five in the the whole of the RCA you, you know this was um, the late nineties um, but it wasn't very sort of um, very diverse and then you almost sort of um, start to 
uh, look back or there's almost like this sort of stop that you've taken, that you've had if you've had a very diverse um, uh, experience growing up. You've, you've got all this this sort of stock that makes you not actually think about um, expectations of of, um, of of diversity within the people around you. It's it's something. It's it's almost like we we just did not think about it. We didn't. Uh, did we? Yeah. And then became just became accepted of. Uh, I'm just gonna be surrounded by people who are who are predominantly white, yeah. and most of the tutor. Most of the tutors or the tutors that I experienced were all white as well. But I'm so heartened to see so much more diversity amongst students as well as, the tut as tutors now amongst institutions. And I'm really glad to see this 20 years later. So I know we're having this conversation. Uh, from my experience, because um, I the past 10 years, I saw a big change starting with my my LCF experience that, that I wasn't feeling a part of it or being respected by the tutor and then coming into industry I've worked in the industry before any of the uh, Black Lives Matters movements mm -hmm. and I saw such a change before and after in the industry like I felt like before people would just say whatever they want in the industry um, to me uh, and now there's some kind of awareness in, in there like you know they, they won't just say anything to you anymore uh, and then yeah and, and I felt like you know people are going to open up a lot more um, yeah and from from that aspect and I felt more comfortable hanging out with people who have an open mind opinion doesn't mean you know, previously it was like all oh, white English. If they're all surrounded by themselves, uh, then they they never expect you to. They cannot imagine what it's like to be different. Mm -hmm. But if people are now having a bit of open mind opinion or like just accepting, like everyone can come from different experience, and and you know that makes a welcoming welcome environment and I feel more comfortable to talk about my experience like this. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It was, it was I was going to say something similar. I think my career started 20 years ago and it's predominant, it's been predominantly surrounded by white people and, and after in the past years it definitely has changed. I've experienced racism, comments about what they expect out of me because I was Chinese and kind of had a lot of generalization and kind of assumptions about me because I was Chinese and what they I've, I've have been told, oh yeah, we've hired you because you know you're Chinese, you're quiet, you work hard. Mm -hmm. And that happened earlier on in my career a number of times. I mean, now it's People are much more aware of what they're yeah. doing, yeah, exactly. what they're saying. They are recognising our experience, as Sal was saying, is very different to theirs. But I'm still, particularly now, in a senior level, it's predominantly white. And it is changing. And when I work in other countries, you see a slight change. And I'm glad to see it. But... I can't wait over the next five years to see what happens. Too. Yeah, well, it's, 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 it's nice that you start to sort of speak about um, the experience of, of industry, mm. sort of like my my experience as well, sort of um, re reflects the trajectory of the, my experience in education in the sense of um, the, the, the junior sort of like end, you know, it, it's very, it was very sort of... Um, Diverse. I was lucky. I know that I'm lucky to to be involved in um, companies where uh, at junior level is it is quite um, diverse. But then the more senior I got, the the less and less diverse. Um, but... Yeah, I guess adding to that, I think adding back to the question that you came back to, Elaine, saying in terms of. Um, when I was in my university experience and then going to work in Ghana that was more more diverse, what, what impact did that have on me and how has it changed my experience now as a, I'm quite early in my lecturing career, maybe I've been lecturing for the past like four years and I think going to Ghana and being in a space, being in a space that was a, a lot more diverse meant I ca and having, in a way, the guy I went to work with was almost, almost became like a mentor. So it meant that I coming back with that confidence and kind of knowing who I was, um, now working with students and thinking about issues to do with race and 
representation and things like that, I'm also always making sure that I'm implementing that in, within my work. Even though I work in a, in a space where I, there are still very few Black female lecturers. Um, if I look at my team, I'm probably the only one. <laughs> and that says something, I guess. Um, so I think that I try to, you know, with the students that I work with or even young academics that I meet, I try to always kind of support them in their work and things like that. But I think there's progress being made, but I think it's, yeah, there's still... It could be, it could be faster. Yeah, but yeah, there's still, there's, there's, still, there's still changes that are, you know, coming through. Mm. You know, so. And, you know, one of the reasons we're having this discussion today is the impact that the FACE organisation is having within education particularly, um, and with the summit extending beyond that too. Um, so, um, yeah, obviously I am I'm a white academic and I've been sort of involved in the FACE organisation as part of the associates group for a couple of years now. And just because I want to learn, really, um, I have seen friends from um, from Asian backgrounds, from um, Black British backgrounds. I've seen them experience prejudice in their education, which was, you know, very impactful on them, but also extending into their careers as well. Um, so it's it's you know a learning process for me and the other white academics that are part of the associate groups to make change to make positive change in the experiences that our students are having and so that they don't all have to feel like they're the pioneers like some of you have sort of described having to be the one person mm. um, or have feeling like it's up to you to have to kind of um you know help others that are coming behind you that there should be support from your white colleagues your white tutors to kind of remove these barriers or, or um, that might make life more difficult than it needs to be yeah. really well I, I think it's really important what you said there because it's the the fact that we're having this conversation and the fact that we we um we need to be comfortable in having a conversation about um diversity and it, um, diversity expectations is is a is a, a a really big sort of um uh, step for, uh, step forward in that in in this sense, you know, because it should be something that we speak about just the same as we 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 speak about the the need to be um to design and create responsibly in um you know it's so, it's social responsibility at the end of the day, and and um with with diversity comes a comes a a, a, a richness and a more sort of authentic um outcomes. You know, so um, that being in mind, um, it will be really interesting to hear your your view and your sort of aspirations on um, how you perceive going into industry where and where diversity is concerned. Are uh, are there sort of um, countries, cities, places you'd like to sort of um, um, like to be, or you know? Is there, have you, have you thought about these things? Uh, yeah, so I've been thinking about it a lot more recently and I'd love to stay in London for as long as possible after I graduate. Obviously, I'm kind of trying to keep my options a bit open. I've been thinking about maybe Milan or New York, like fashion cities in that sense. But um, I'd love to stay in London. I'm, I'm beginning to start saving and looking into a graduate visa. But I think one thing I kind of realized now, maybe it's specifically with London or any other immigration process, the idea of having to figure out the paperwork to stay in the country and the funds to stay in the country, because it can be really expensive. And I'm quite lucky to be in a position where I work part time and I have family that can help me in some of those regards. But as far as diversity, it would be amazing to kind of see a bit more like leeway or support for people that want to enter London and stay and work there. Because the general consensus I kind of got is that there is always priority to British citizens or British nationals, and I guess in every country, rightfully so. But it would be amazing to see more support for people that come into London wanting to work, whether it's you know reducing the cost or making the paperwork less of a maze. And yeah, so that's what caught my expectation a bit more ease with going into working in London. It should be as easy as just applying for the job and getting it. And especially if you're planning on working for a big company, which is my kind of goal to go into more of a 
caring girl VMH setting. If the company does have money to kind of like support you with the funds that make it less stressful and the paperwork that makes it less stressful. But do you have an expectation of you? You, you mentioned your your um, um, one of your aspirations anyway yeah. is, is to work for a, a, a big sort of like a yeah. global sort of a national sort of organisation. Yeah. Do you have any um, thoughts on how diverse a team, the team would be that you're entering? Uh, to be very honest, I haven't thought about that deeply, but I guess after this conversation, I guess the conflict world, I think it's just given that it's a diverse team. Mm -hmm. We have like a lot of very creative people from all very creative backgrounds, and it would just be a waste to not make the use of the fact that everyone has such a different creative story to bring. So my hope is that it becomes less of more of a selling poor alternative thing than it's, it's just more of a given in industry mm -hmm. these days. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, once I graduate, I'm actually leaving my options really open. So I'm considering the America and then Germany and also London as well, or maybe even go back to China. So I actually want to look around the world and then see different levels of diversity within different countries, as like international as possible I could be, and then also just want to see different industries as well and uh, what's the situation in different industries and then what are the things I could do and then maybe I could participate in any of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You look excited at the prospect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> I'm leaving my getting option. into that part yeah. of your life. Yeah. Um, and you see no boundaries for yourself. It's see, you know, from what you're just saying, which is exciting and, and different from perhaps the experience you might have had going into industry. Um, we going to any uh, I, I feel like for me, I never thought about diversity after I graduate. But now that I'm hearing you guys saying it used to not be so diverse, but it's starting to get more diverse. I feel like I'm anxious about it and also happy about it. That that is that is gonna change. So yeah, but for like for options of where to go, I feel like I'm quite open, like Julia as well. It doesn't have to be London, like or the UK or Europe. But I want to see what options available. Yeah. I was going to say it's quite it's exciting to see that in terms of your outlooks and thinking about your futures that there is, um, there is no fear. There shouldn't be fear anyway. But they, they, there's excitement about you walking and stepping into those spaces and. If we look at that, you guys are the future. Not that we're that old. Let's like, think about the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm looking back at the past, like a retrospective, and we're, we're thinking about our experiences and maybe certain challenges that we've had. And, and I guess being an industry and being an academic, it's nice to see that actually the, the things that we're considering all the time in terms of giving you guys very positive experiences that you are can take are taking those forward. So especially in terms of you know being at Chelsea and like running interventions as we're kind of bringing different diverse speakers and things like that, that you guys are able to have these positive experiences and that you're going to be able to remember those when you go into industry and remembering, remembering this conversation, especially and if things do come up or pop up and remembering actually what your position is and that what you bring to the table. So I think in a way that is you want that, to tell us that, a bit that, more about that, the textiles intervention? That's quite exciting. So it was um, a bit more about that. It was a um, uh, project that I ran with my colleague Matthew Crowley, who's also part of the textile team. And we're looking at kind of looking at how students are merging their theory into practice, but showing that through bringing in different practitioners from different backgrounds. So we had um, a lady called um, someone called Zoo, um, Lou Williams that runs like, the Zine um, Girl Zine. We also had. Um, Esther Bright, where there's um, kind of um, moving image, kind of working with your body, kind of um, workshops, different kinds of speakers, almost inspired by students and thinking about how they're merging their theories into practice in different kind of creative ways. But also it was specifically practitioners from different backgrounds. And that was the kind of key thing that they were able to bring their story into the work and inspire students from a different perspectives. Different, different in the sense of diverse backgrounds. Di different, different diverse backgrounds from different kind of lived experiences. Because sometimes, you know, we, you know, you, you bring that into institution space, but you also want to see how other people are doing that in industry to inspire the students. So, yeah. Well, it's, it's a really interesting point, like, which, you know, we should sort of like add to the, the questions is, 
your experience at Chelsea and sort of like working with the um, with the educators at Chelsea, how how has that sort of um, been in terms of sort of like diversity? How do you feel? <laughs> Um, I think it definitely the three years experience definitely made me more confident because before I was really afraid to speak for myself, to express my feelings and also to express my ideas in front of the whole public because I was the uh, very few Asian girls or just the only one Chinese girl. And then, but now in Chelsea is so diverse and I just feel what I'm, what, what, like no matter what I say, there will be someone who has like similar experience and who will understand. And then that whole thing just made me more confident. And then also made me more confident about my life choices. That's why I want to go to different countries. But before I'd be like, maybe I would just stay in London. It's my comfort zone. But now I want to jump out of it. That's good. Amazing. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Any false pal? Um, I feel like Chelsea made me value myself more as well because before I think I'm different so I'm not allowed to have voice I don't allow to be make like say my opinions asking for help or, but hit community here at Chelsea is really supportive and there's always someone's like relatable and like always someone's there for you but also working with the uni like everyone kind of respect everyone because I work with student union as well and they, I feel like they are really diverse as well like more than what I expected them to be yeah cool cool what about um you guys in the sense of uh your expectations of um the 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 academics but also sort of like in in industry maybe the senior people in industry in terms of diversity what did you have any expectations and and what was what were they or um i didn't have that many expectations either because i think because my experience has been so different from yours I thought it would be very similar in industry and to be honest it has been and I know I'm talking anecdotally from my own experience it has been predominantly not very diverse and um, particularly now and senior as I think we go back to what you're saying Nick as you went through education it just became less diverse and it's the same I work with a lot of senior team mostly senior teams now and it's not very diverse even when I'm working with a team in um, I work with a predominantly large number of global brands and obviously global brands you are in every country now. When I first started, it was generally European or US centric. So the, the my, minority was white. And, but you would expect now that all global brands are now you've got, they're in every single country with, in, with and yeah, their teams are predominantly white. But that is changing. I see big brands having offices in, I've worked with their offices in Korea or China or India, but um, I'd like to see more of it happening and more of their teams changing and being more diverse. But it's like globalization needs to be balanced by, yeah. by the reflection of the team yeah, representation. And, and I think at the beginning when we didn't, when we first started, we didn't have the internet. We just, I missed 20 years ago, there wasn't the internet. Everything was through publications, magazines. You flew to see design places and you bought the things that were regional. So you bought the European brands in Europe, or maybe you might have one store in New York. But now it's globalization. We, why can't, and we can see brands now catering for those different markets, but yet it's predominantly a white lead team not understanding the entire culture yeah. or they I, but I do work with teams now who are making sure they're working with the co locals to get the culture right because they know how critical it is to cater to those markets um, but also it, they're recognizing after especially after the past few years that they need to recognize they can't dictate mm -hmm. everything for all, each of these different markets so I'm sure you've had some things in there. 
Yeah, I, d I didn't have expectations coming into industry at all. Um, I guess my confidence grew massively since I went to RCA because RCA was so diverse and I had I had to train my voice. And in RCA, you really have to speak for yourself. And that's the first time I kind of really thought about my opinion matters. And that's the first time I start kind of voicing up for myself and thinking about my identity and what that I'm different from other people that I, I could bring on the table. Mm. Um, but, and then after that, I, I went into the industry, that kind of like um, <laughs> went back to zero again. <laughs> um, yeah, yes, yeah, so I've been in the industry. It's just like um, follow what they're saying and then the team is white and there's not much of a respect for um, international background. Mm. Uh, I kind of just like followed and not having expectation. Um, but since the the new movement, especially in the past two years, I really feel a change. Actually, from um, I've never imagined this conversation could happen, um, considering how I got used to it in in my past experience in education and industry i never thought you know we could have this discussion thinking about that you know thinking we we want to build the world a little bit more diverse mm -hmm. and i'm so used to that mm -hmm. i'm so excited to hear you guys feeling excited about coming into the world thinking about different countries and i was thinking the same thing if i start thinking about different cities i'm just like oh, these cities are like that. And then I'm quite comfortable in London. <laughs> it's really nice here because everyone is different and people are open up for it. And then, but some of the cities are like this, you know. I think that's it's a, it's a really good point to sort of like to ask this question, uh, which is, do you think you should have expectations um, where diversity is concerned. Like, for instance, if you you um, you're in an interview and you you um, they ask you, have you got any more questions? Do you think that's a uh, a, a valid question to 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 ask? So, so what do you think? Um, um, sorry, I'm, yeah. So I think having expectations natural is just a normal thing to have in any sort of train of thinking or any line of questioning. But yeah, I think it's a good thing to ask, especially you mentioned asking questions at the end of an interview, for example. It is a big thing to ask at the end of the day. It can probably feel very easy for you to feel a bit ostracized or a bit different if you're the only one kind of person on that team. And that it does kind of speak to maybe the tolerance of the team, the mindset of the team, yeah. how they hire people and yeah. I think especially now this whole idea of like quotas, like you want to know if you're actually there because you are generally tell the not, not a quote, and that can be such a big thing, especially if um, you're someone that's non-white. I mean, I kind of say this in the perspective of an Arab person realizing that I feel like I think I'm relatively confident I might be the only Arab person on my course that I've met so far. And so I think it was just like a big thought process someone who's an international student, the idea of when you are going into a space or you have expectations, you want to know you have a genuine talent that you're not just a quota to fill up. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Really, really yeah. good point. Yeah. Has everyone has everyone felt that way before or worried about that idea? Yeah, definitely. That was one of my worry as well. And um, I feel like even in the interview, it's really good to know that they really accept different diversity. It's just not filling up, and also. I will be working the team as well. So I, honestly, I just want to know what the team vibe will be like. Is there a good environment for me to input my ideas? Will they maybe respect my ideas? It's really good to know. I never thought I could ask this question. Mm -hmm. I had no, I didn't even think this is possible. No, no, not at all. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I'll ask that question next time. <laughs> But it's 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 great that you know you you touched on um, you know cultural what a cultural shift um, the the BLM um, uh, movement was and and how that pushed 
and a more sort of like open discussion where where diversity is concerned. Um, have you got any um, thoughts about um, face and the impact of um, the the face collective, as in fashion academics creating equality? Um, how that sort of impacted these sort of like conversations? Well, and just yeah, one minute. It was, it was sort of coming off of what um, the students were saying is that, you know, recruitment practices themselves, you know, you, you, you should be being interviewed by a diverse panel, you know, so that it's immediately obvious that that is the culture of the place you're, you're going to. So, you know, it's, it's not just about you know, the interviewee asking questions you know, to make themselves feel comfortable. There should be a position from the prospective employers that they are putting that in place so they have a responsibility um, as well. So it's just to kind of go off of that point, but perhaps going back to your question, Nick, I don't know if you want to speak on that. I'm just glad that we are able to give given this opportunity to say things that I never imagined I could say this or this matter to people. Mm -hmm. you know, my experience actually, you know, means some to someone else. Mm -hmm. I never thought I could share that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Any, any other thoughts? It, it was interesting and great to have like this conversation as well, because I like after listen to every one opinion, I think, oh, maybe I don't know enough about diversity that maybe I don't realize that I have that position. Like maybe I'm in that gap of not being diverse enough as well, but I didn't realize. Yeah, I feel like from now on, I would just like, I want to know more about it, I want to research more. And I would be more brave to ask the industry when I go have interview for a job in the future as well. Like what is your, what is your guys' vision about it? And how how open that company are with diversity i think it's a really important um important thing to to ask and when i think about sort of the experiences that i've had sort of with um um uh, sort of like human resource human resources and um going into situations where i thought i've just clearly thought about the the position you know, uh, what I'm going to be working on, as in um, um, when I'm going into a, a, a creative company, these have been the, the the things that have been at the forefront of my mind, the position, the, the, the actual job, what I'm going to be designing, um, and then uh, the, the diversity, I don't know if it's sort of like the whole London armour, let's, let's say, I, I've never really sort of like thought about thought about it being a, 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 a hindrance, being in any sort of situation, but then getting into uh, a, a situation where you're, you're sort of um, the HR department, and this actually happens, the, the HR department brought, on my first day, brought the only other black member of um, the company down to greet me on the day to, 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 to go in and it was like a stark, you know, it was very odd. And then that sort of tallied into that that experience of, of, of being in that certain company for a, for a couple of years. It wasn't very diverse at all. And their approach to diversity was very clumsy. So it's, it's so it, it is a very important sort of um, thing to sort of uh, to think about and to and 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 again i'm like as a as a as, as a member of the panel i'm really excited to be able to to have these conversations i wanted to bring up a point which you've mentioned to me before nick and sort of in some of your concerns that students voiced about you know am i just here to kind of fill up a quota that sort of imposter syndrome mm -hmm. um and yeah, just wondering, you know, everybody feels imposter syndrome at some point, but, you know, no one should be experiencing that because of their ethnicity. Um, I just, yeah, I wondered if that's something you've heard about or that you kind of recognise or in relation to sort of being in a minoritised position. I think it's just um, 
it's just something I always figured happened. I mean, my parents, for example, they've worked in corporate jobs for a long time, so they've always been the one to tell me about how the office works, how quotas work, like diversity hires. And I remember, um, and it feels really silly looking back now, but when I was applying for St. Martin's, it was just so competitive to the point that there was like this whole conspiracy theory about how they're writing out the quota. They're like, we're going to take X amount of English students, X amount of international, X amount of like black people or Asian people, for example. And so that's kind of where it all started, especially with arts unis are a great space to incubate ideas and diversity, but it is an institution at the end of the day. And there's that little of like, they think about who they take on and why they're taking on people. So I guess that's where it comes from to an extent as well. This, you know, that systemic racism, which is behind all of those kind of um, those theories of how things people are recruited onto courses, um, but it's there, isn't it? It is there. It's it's undeniable. Um, but it's already making people make choices um, about where they're going to apply, which is is. You know, and that's when we're talking about going up through the levels of education to industry. If it's happening before students even apply, then that's impacting, then, isn't it? The diversity of different cohorts. Um, joining UAL quite recently, it was quite interesting actually to see that, that the, the course isn't more diverse. I, I had sort of thought that it would be more diverse than working at a regional university, and I didn't find that that was the case. Um, so, yeah, it's really interesting. The point, I mean, I don't know if she can elaborate on this, but a friend of mine, Scottish, we were talking about universities in Scotland and art schools in Scotland and how Scottish nationals usually get their education for free. And so the quota kind of paid, plays a big role in how many Scottish students they'll accept over international students and so on. So I guess sometimes it's speculative, but it is clear that sometimes it is a big part of how they accept students based on fees and their nationality and so on. Yeah, there is a... When I was studying, it's definitely it was um, local students first more than anything else because that was the whole point of their, their education system was for the people there. So, but that was a while ago. I don't know what it is now. Yeah. So, <laughs> just touch on your point you mentioned about a bit of off topic, um, imposter syndrome, and obviously being in a space where you are of the minority and how that kind of um, changes and how you navigate that. And I think that is important for, or just maybe I'm touching on the fact that we all come from a different positionality as well. All, all of our lived experiences are very different in how we navigate space. And I think, I listened to a podcast recently, that imposter syndrome can also be there to push you. And I think it's important, it can be important, maybe look, coming from my experience, if you are of the minority, finding finding a sense of community or having, obviously, for instance, um, Nick, you're a member of FACE and having, you know, organisations that are like that to support you or students, you know, because we've had lectures from FACE and different things on our course, but they're there to, to guide students, but also have that support. So if you are, you know, of the minorities in that space, you have that confidence to then come into your own because there's other outlets or other, other things you can connect to. But I think in a way it can, it can also be a good thing. You know, and and naturally, you know, imposter syndrome, because I was listening to this, that you're not, we're not all good at something in the beginning, right? You always, you always have to learn and put yourself in a space of uncomfortability in order to grow. It's the only way that we we do grow as creative people. So, using that as a tool when you are in a you know in a space that where you can't see yourselves, and obviously from our experiences on this side. <laughs> Um, we have, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're three different women that have navigated, you know, the spaces in, in very different ways, but we've got there from all our different positions. So I think that it's, you know, it shows that it is, um, it's possible and we've, we've learned from it yeah. in many ways. Yeah. Um, so just to add up to your point, like from my experience, I come to this country from China. Mm. I was completely different. Mm. I had to adapt to the British culture, have to adapt to the British like, you know, way of behaving, mm. learning how do you do at, what do you do at work what do you do after work? You know, I have to learn all of this It's a part of me kind of adapting myself to this society but in the same time i there are people who are just assume that i 
I can hang out with them because I made a big effort to to make them feel comfortable to hang out with me. And there are people who are more interested in me. I'm naturally drawn to these people. Um, there are people who are asking me questions about my background, so I'm naturally just more friends with them. And, and then the other people who are just assume I'm like them, then, you know, I am just... I'm just like, I'm making an effort here. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, but in London, it's just, it's, it's really nice being here because we're kind of all different and people are just naturally more interested in you um, of what your background is. Mm. And that's what made me really love living here. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. It's, 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 so, it's so good to hear. I think we're sort of like coming to a, a sort of like natural sort of close of the... The, the formal conversation. I'm sure we'll go off and have lunch and, <laughs> and sort of um, and sort of carry on. But um, I guess it, it's it'll be nice to sort of end on the note of just to thank you for um, for having a, a very what is a very unique uh, conversation, um, uh, sitting down and discussing expectations of of of, of such a of a, a, a a, a topic of diversity and I hope that it's the, the the beginning of many I know that we we're as a as a sort of team at, at Chelsea gonna um mm. gonna push for more um, spa um spaces and opportunity to to have discussions like like this and um I suppose one more closing question is do you think that's a good idea to have more conversations Definitely. like this. Yeah. Okay. So how should we end it? Should we just talk of like a pause? We have a few minutes for questions. Um, any questions of what you've seen? Um, uh, very powerful. Um, thanks, Zhao. Zhao's a, um, I'm taking it, it's, it's Zhao Jing, who a, a, was a, a, a panel member. Um, I could ask um, the panel members if they've got any, um, any thoughts uh, Sigmoni um, really enjoyed being part of the part of the panel. Yeah, I I I really enjoyed it myself as as well. Um, I just wanted to thank our panels um, panelists again, Nick. I'm afraid I can't have my camera on at the moment, but um, I think recording that discussion and the discussions, as Nick said, kind of before and afterwards, um, was you know incredibly powerful um and you know really sort of appreciated the honesty and the openness of the conversation that day and um so thank you particularly to the students um for being part of that um but also Zhao and Chi too and yeah, Simone I'd <laughs> yeah I'd like to echo that um it 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 really did feel um like a um a a, a really unique opportunity, but um, the beginning of something um, um, in in terms of having a, a really sort of open um, uh, conversation about um, expectations where um, where diversity is, is is concerned, and I think that's something that came out from the actual um, panel discussion um, is, um, and it was a really important fact that I think we should um start to 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 have expectations uh, around this and voice them so um so again um, like elaine says um i'd really like to to thank the the, the panel members for um for for taking part and and, and trusting us um uh, and um i'd like to to fight, thank face um for for giving us the platform and the opportunity to um to uh, uh, start to um, spearhead conversations like this. And um, I hope you enjoy 
the rest of the um, the, the summit. Um, so thank you. I'll I'll leave it at that. I just wanted to say, just to say a few words. I'm literally at the face summit now. I've just um, come upstairs to a, to a corner to find some space to speak. Um, but yeah, it was very, it was great being part of the talk, and I, and also I think for the students, um, just obviously discussing their expectations on diversity and how they feel things are improving. And I think it's um, great that you know, Nick, with both um, Nick and Elaine, kind of creating a space where we can have these kind of open conversations and I think it's uh, you know it's um it's a small step in pushing um us forward especially as you know being part of the Chelsea team as well so it's all very um it's encouraging so I just wanted to mention that as well and I, I hope people have taken a lot away from the conversation and it's a, a step to making that kind of progress yeah for us add that thank you <laughs> thank you Nick um, thank you Elaine and um, we'll see you. Well, I'll definitely see you at the at the summit. I'm going. To, I'm at Chelsea at the moment, so I'm going to jump on my bike and hop, um, hop over to St Martin's um, to to the summit. So okay, yeah. see you soon. See you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.